Hi loves and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get this look here, which I did not plan at all. It just kind of was like a chit chat, get ready with me. So get ready, get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea, get a snack and sit down and join me for this chit chatty, get ready with me video. Let's get started. So starting off obviously with foundation today, I'm gonna to show my foundation application. And as you can see, I do have a few acne marks on my face cause story of my life. If I get a pimple, I always get a red mark that lasts quite a few weeks after. It's just how my skin is. It sucks so much. And where is my coffee? Anyway, today I want to do another chatty get ready with me style video and just kind of sit with you guys and talk about things because I feel like I haven't really done uh, makeup tutorials like this in a while. So I wanted to just do it. I had a lot of fun with the last one. So this one, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. So once again, today I'm gonna to be going in with the only foundation that matches my tanned, my new tanned skin tone, and it is the Kate Tokyo Powderless Liquid for Cover Foundation in OCD. I actually can't find this particular color on Amazon. I was looking so much the other day um, with the last video, and they just didn't have it on Amazon. They had like all the other colors that I've used, OCB, OCC, but they just didn't have OCD, which was really interesting. But OCD is the one that matches my current skin tone. So putting a couple pumps of that onto my Damp Beauty Blender, which is my Eco Tools one, which I absolutely love. I'm just gonna buff that into the skin. As you can see, it's like literally a perfect match. I love it so much. I never really like use different foundations in my tutorials because a lot of foundations tend to break me out, but this is the only one that never does for some reason. It's like the perfect foundation for my skin. If anyone's wondering, it's a um, Japanese brand. For some reason too, like I don't know why, but ever since I came to Australia, I break out so much on this side of my mouth and I can't figure out why because I don't sleep on that side that much. I'm gonna put a little bit on my eye as well as my eyeshadow base. Just whatever is left over on the beauty blender. And then today I'm gonna go in and try the Cezanne, which is another Japanese drugstore brand concealer that's nice yellow base. I'm just gonna use a really small amount of that under my eye just because it is too light for my skin tone right now. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit. Today I want to do like a really wearable everyday bronzy makeup look because that's like normally what I would do off camera because I feel I've noticed whenever I do film a makeup tutorial for you guys like I always try to make it so that it would be interesting for YouTube like something more similar to what other beauty YouTubers do but then like I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose of your own unique channel because shouldn't it kind of be what you like and what you would wear but then I also don't want it to be like boring and too simple at the same time but I'm just gonna say screw that I'm gonna do what I want and what I would wear I kind of did that with the last tutorial like a nice simple look that I would wear if I was going out okay so like I've been saying recently I'm not gonna set my face my entire face with powder just because it breaks me out <laughs> story of my life so i'm just gonna go ahead and set just the eye like my eyelids and my nose areas that i don't want to get oily and i want my makeup to kind of blend easily so like my eyeshadows and stuff like that so today for powder i'm just gonna go in with this nyx no filter in ivory because it's a nice powder it's not too cakey and it doesn't change the color of my foundation too much which my other powders tend to do so I'm just gonna apply that just to the eye area kind of like prepping that area for my eyeshadows for my contour today I'm going to be using something I haven't used in a while which is the Innisfree little contour kit that I have here I love Innisfree makeup and skincare it's seriously like one of the best Korean road shop brands and just picking up that contour color with my Etude House foundation brush. I'm just going to go ahead and lightly bronze up that area, but just really, really lightly because I don't like a heavy contour. So you guys, I usually like get really chit chatty on my vlogging channel, but today I want to get chit chatty with you guys. So 
I'm going to let you know now, I am officially going to be going back to Canada for a little visit for one month with my family um, mid-August, so coming up really soon. I haven't bought my ticket yet though, which is why I haven't really wanted to mention it because I'm not, I'm one of those people that I don't like to talk about anything or hype anything up or get excited about things when they're not 100% set in stone. Like that's just how I am because you know, it's not 100% and you don't want to be like, blah, 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 I'm going here, I'm doing this and it ends up falling through and then people will be like, what happened to that? And you're like, oh, didn't happen, you know? I feel like that's always so embarrassing. It's like the worst. So that's why I haven't really wanted to share it on my vlog channel because I do have more of you watching, watching that channel. But I think it's pretty much set in stone. Like I'm just waiting for my payment to go through and then I'm gonna buy my ticket. So it's pretty much for sure. And I told my sister today, like she found out. So I feel like that makes it official as well because I didn't want to tell her until I knew I was for sure going. And then she kind of just asked me, it was like, are you coming in September? And I'm like, uh, I'm actually coming mid-August and staying through September, which I think is going to be really nice because as I've been mentioning a lot recently, it is winter in Australia right now. And I'm technically in the coldest area, one of the coldest areas of Australia, which is Melbourne. So it's not really like summer weather here. It's really chilly. It's like fall, consistently like fall. So I can't wait to get into some warmer weather because you guys, I went from Japan winter to Australia winter. So I am just hurting for some happy summer weather. Maybe I'll do like a um, Toronto meetup. I'm not too sure though, because I've never actually done a meet and greet before. And it's, a, it's really intimidating for me for some reason. Like I definitely wouldn't want to go alone, so. And for my nose contour, I'm taking the same shade with this really flat um, shadow brush. And I'm just going to draw the lines on my contour. So doing the usual, my new routine where I just go up halfway my nose. And then just following the natural nose bridge with lines. And then drawing a line right after the ball of my nose. And then cutting it off at the bottom. Oh, I forgot how much I love this contour palette because it's just the perfect like light colors. Not too heavy, not too light. And I'm just going in and lightly buffing out those lines a little bit with my beauty blender. Just a little bit though. Because I noticed in my last video it didn't like show up on camera that much. My contour, like it kind of disappeared. But in person you could see it. But in camera it kind of just disappeared. Then I'm just gonna go back in with that powder and lightly powder my nose so my contour doesn't disappear throughout the day. For blush, today I feel like wearing a little bit of blush. I'm gonna be taking this Charlotte Tilbury Beach Stick Lip and Cheek Dewy Color Pop in the color Moon Beach, which is this really nice peachy shade with a little bit of shimmer on it. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my finger to apply that today because I don't know you guys like I used to love using brushes way back in the day back in freaking like 2012 on my YouTube channel when I was starting out but like my skin just can't handle brushes for um, cream products or foundations like it just really irritates my skin no matter how soft the brush may be it just breaks me out I get like bumpy and hives and stuff so it's really unfortunate I absolutely love this um, this color though. I think it's just stunning. Like it's just the perfect light bit of color. Nice little pop of color on the skin and it works really well if you want that sun-kissed glow. It's really, really pretty. Speaking of 2011, 2012, 2013, those were like my early days of YouTube when I had like no subscribers. I had like 1,000 or something and I would get like, I don't know, 300 views on my videos. But like I've noticed a lot of people comment on my channel and they're like, you've changed. What have you done to your face? You're not the same as you were. And it's like, it's been almost a decade. I actually was um, going to talk about this in one of my vlogs, but I cut it out just because I felt 
like I feel like a lot of people that watch my vlog channel are really I guess hunting for drama but it's not really just something that's dramatic I think it's more something that's you know a fact but like I mean yeah I've changed but people change as they grow up you know I'm no longer 19 years old you know I'm I'm 25 now it's it's been a long time it's been like six years so of course I've changed and I think people seem to forget that or they want to they want to hunt for drama or something and it's like well if those people did YouTube or recorded a bit back in the day when they were 19 and then looked back at their videos when they're 25 I'm pretty sure they would think like they've changed as well or their face changes like I'm aging you guys my my cheekbones aren't as high as they used to be um I'm starting to get like loose skin on my neck because I'm gonna be 30 in the next five years so yeah of course my face looks different it's aging like my skin doesn't look nearly as good as it did even three years ago, which is depressing. Today I'm going to try to use a eyebrow product I haven't used in a while because I, I think it's dried up a bit, but it's the Excel Tokyo um, eyebrow pen and you can't get it online, unfortunately. I think that's why I stopped using it because I couldn't find it for you guys, so I thought it was pointless to use it in videos, but it's like a really lovely ash blonde shade and it just does the perfect like false hair look. I absolutely love it, but... Yeah, you can't really get it online, but if you guys can find there, it's basically liquid eyeliner, but for your eyebrows, and it's like the best for filling in the hairs and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. It kind of like got me thinking today because I woke up to a comment on one of my videos saying like, oh, I haven't watched your channel in so long, and then I've come back and your face has changed so much. What have you done? Blah, blah, blah. Just being so nasty. And mean and I was like yeah I've like of course I've changed you probably haven't watched my channel in five years or four years like you know of course I've changed my eyebrows I let them fill in my skin is sagging and then uh, right after I read that comment one of the youtubers I used to watch way back in the day around the same time I started YouTube her name's like KL or something she used to do a lot of DIY videos and I subscribed to her a long time ago, and I, stay sub I stayed subscribed because I really liked her, her bubbly personality. But she used to be really, really big back in the day when I first started YouTube. She was, like, a huge YouTuber for DIYs. She was, like, up there with Bub's Beauty. And then she posted on her Facebook account being, like, I think I'm gonna, you know, just let go of the past and let go of my channel and start a new one because so many of my subscribers are stuck with the 2011 version of me and like I'm not the same person I was like six five years ago and that's just natural like people change people grow people evolve as we get older like and she was saying she was thinking of starting a new channel and I was like really inspired by that because yeah when I started YouTube like I didn't know what I was doing and I was trying to like portray a person like a certain image and yeah I got subscribers from that but of course I'm not, that's not who I am entirely like it's not me right now sitting down and just chatting that was like the me trying to like have a have a theme have an image and stuff so I mean I wish I could like I wish I had the stability where I could just abandon this channel and start a new one for beauty and stuff but I don't really have that kind of stability and, and confidence to do that and kind of let go but I was thinking I'd just set all my old videos to private because that's not who I am and it never really was who I was it was just me trying to like experiment like I was young I was 19 years old and I don't want people clinging to that image of me thinking and like always looking back to videos from 2013, 2012 and telling me I've changed, you know? I haven't been like that for years and I never really was like that. That's kind of why I moved more to my vlog channel, just because my vlog channel is the day-to-day -day me. Like me as I am every day and of course, you know, your mood changes, how you feel changes. You know, you wake up some day and you're really bubbly, you wake up some days and you're not. And that's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to just be the real me in a daily life. So that's kind of why I moved there more, but we'll see. So I was thinking I'm just going to set all my old videos to private because I was young and 
didn't really know what I was doing back then. And I don't want people constantly looking back at videos from six years ago and telling me I've changed. Anyway, that was a long chit chat. This video is going to be so long. I'm sorry, you guys. Please forgive me. But I feel like it's fun to do these kind of sit down talk, talk videos once in a while, once in a blue moon. Of course, not all my videos are going to be like this, you guys. Like sometimes I do voiceovers where I have a really quick makeup tutorial. And then sometimes I like to do these. It's funny because in the past year, I feel like YouTube has become so dramatic. Like there never used to be channels dedicated to, you know, drama or, you know, bashing other YouTubers or bashing YouTubers and making up false stories. Like that's such a celebrity tabloid thing. But I guess some people have decided like, to do that with YouTubers and bloggers now and it's so like depressing it's so scary because you know we do this as a hobby and then people are starting to like bash you and make drama and try to pit friends against each other and it's really sickening like I don't watch any of those but I see them sometimes popping up in my recommended when I'm watching like some of my favorite beauty YouTubers and it's just like I really don't like it. Like, yeah, back in the day, YouTube used to be such a friendly, um, well, not, it wasn't super friendly, but it was such like a happy place to be. And it really was like inspiring and wanted you to be a YouTuber and stuff. But now it's kind of like, like, I almost don't want to be a YouTuber anymore. Like, it's just getting to the point where it's like, what's the fun in it? If you're just constantly subjecting yourself to bullying. Like recently I've been thinking, what would I do if, I stopped doing YouTube because right now it's it's a second job for me, but it's not I'm not really able to do it like that anymore with YouTube's changes like YouTube did a big change a couple months ago where they cut all the earnings for YouTubers and I was one of those people so I have a huge cut so it's been on my mind a lot lately. What am I going to do if I don't do YouTube anymore because it, it might happen like it might go back to just all I can do is one video a week because I might have to get a second job or get another career going so that I can make a living and, you know, support my living and pay rent. And, oh, by the way, I'm using the Excel Tokyo eyebrow mascara in light ash brown. Yeah, so I was thinking, like, what would I do? Like, I might not be able to do YouTube anymore because I, I might need to get a second job. And I was thinking of, like, moving back to Canada. Like, what's the situation if I have to do that? And I might have to do that, like eventually like I definitely am gonna have to do that eventually but like what would I do as a job and it's really scary to like have to you know start your life all over again because I've been doing the same thing for three years now going on the fourth year going on the fourth year and it's so scary having to like think about starting over again I don't know I've been really stressed about that lately like what am I gonna do if I can't do YouTube as my second job anymore like what kind of second job would I get? Would I be a waitress or something? Which might actually happen. Just weird having to backtrack your life like that. Okay, so for the eyes today, I want to keep it really, really simple. So I'm thinking of going in with this BYS roll on shimmer for face and body in the color olive green and mixing that with kind of a gold brown shade. So basically it's just a pigment shimmer frosted green color, but instead of it being in a pot where you twist it off and could spill it everywhere, it's in a roller. So it makes it easier to apply. So I'm thinking I'm just going to like do that, roll it on kind of all over as my main base eyeshadow. Like I really love this color, but I wish the roller was smaller because I have a really small lid space, so I don't really have that much room to play with. For my blending transition shade, I think I'm just gonna take the bronzing color from the Kylie Jenner Skinny Dip Kit on this Sigma blending brush. And I think I'm just gonna put that right above that green shade. Probably should have done this first. You know, I never really talk about other YouTubers in my videos, but if I had to say who my favorite YouTubers are right now, it definitely would be like, I actually sat down last night and took a while to watch some YouTube videos, which I haven't done in a while just because I have other things on my mind. But um, I actually sat down and watched some of my old favorite YouTubers. So I binge watched Chloe Morello because I always love her. I always find her 
to be so chill, so down to earth, and just so real, which I love in YouTubers. Like, I love the people that are the most real and stuff, like, who are true to their character and who they are as a person. I really love her. She's always been a favorite of mine. And then I also really love Sammy Robinson, who's a Sydney Australian YouTuber. And then I caught up on Nikki Tutorials a bit. The same bronzing color from that kit and just on a pencil brush. I'm just going to do the lower lash line a little bit. The inner corner as well right there. So I feel like I lost a little bit of that BYS pigment, that green color. So I'm going to try to like get it out on the back of my hand because the roller is just too big for my eye space like it just gets messy so i got some of that loose pigment on the back of my hand and i'm going to pick that up with a shadow brush like a really densely packed shadow brush i'm just gonna oh yeah that's way better i'm just gonna reapply that to the lid space i'm actually really excited to go back to canada for a bit i'll definitely bring my camera and stuff and keep filming for you guys while I'm there since I am going to be there for like a month but I'm, I don't know like I just feel like I've been away from home for so long like it's been over a year now it's been almost a year going on half a year and a half now so I'm really excited to go home and see my family and see my cat and my dog I miss them so much and I was thinking I would continue vlogging while I'm in Canada because you guys were a, a bit like disappointed when I stopped vlogging the last time I went back to Canada like I stopped doing my vlogging channel and you guys seem to be a little bit disappointed because you wanted to see what my life in Canada is like. But I'm, I have to tell you now, it's pretty boring because I live in the countryside. Okay, so next I'm going to go into this Innisfree palette and I'm going to pick up... Uh, what should I pick up? I think I'm going to pick up this shade right here. This dark brown kind of chocolate brown shade. Dark chocolate shade. <laughs> so many definitions. And it's from this Innisfree fall kit that I got last year in 2016 so it's probably discontinued but I feel like you can probably still get similar shades on the Innisfree world website and I'm just gonna apply that along the outer portion of my lash line just kind of creating a V shape because so I don't feel like using eyeliner today I'm not really an eyeliner fan like I like eyeliner but I don't know not on me Oops, I think I tailed that off a little bit too far. Wipe it away with my finger. This is going to be the longest tutorial video, you guys. I am sorry. I hope you enjoy it. If anyone's just playing it in the background, leave a comment and let me know if you are. <laughs> Thank you for making it this far. I feel like we're already 20-something minutes in. I'm really digging this eye look. I haven't done an eye look like this in a while. I never use green shadows. I like it because it's kind of like a gold green color. It's not like super green, kind of like a moss or an algae, like a gold algae color. That sounds like, that's like the worst description anyone could call an eyeshadow. Algae green, not a cute name. And I'm gonna take this same brown color and I'm gonna just follow it close to my lash line and connect it to that outer V that I made. I really want to get my hands on like some ColourPop makeup because I only ever bought their liquid lipsticks but I never bought their eyeshadows and I really want to get some of them because they seem to be really really good but I'm so like hesitant to buying new makeup because I have so much already so I'm just going to go back in with that pencil brush and I'm just going to buff out that lash line again with whatever brown shade is left over in it just to soften it up a bit and then taking the beauty blender that I used for my foundation and concealer, I'm just going to really lightly clean up just a little bit that outer edge with whatever is left over. Like I'm not adding any more foundation because I don't want this look to be super crisp. I don't really like that look. I like a natural smoky look. Mm. So before I do my highlight on my eyes, I'm going to carve out my brows with a little bit of that concealer I used on my under eye and a flat synthetic brush. I'm just going to carve out really lightly under them. I really like this look lately. Like I like having fluffy brows with a carved out bottom and a smoky kind of soft eye look. I'm really digging that lately. Like I've never been a fan of super clean lines for my eyes. I've always loved somewhat of a smoky look. 
For my brow bone highlighter today, I'm going to be taking my Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Moonstone that I haven't used in a while. I'm going to be taking that and just going in and highlighting right directly under that brow bone where we just carved it out and just buff that area in between my transition shade and the brow bone highlight just so that it's a little more seamless. Then I want to add a pop of brightness. So I'm going to be taking this um, sweet, sweet, sparkling eye gloss, which is just this kind of eye glitter that I got in Japan. I'm, I guarantee I won't be able to find this online, you guys. So you can use any kind of shimmer frosted um, wet eyeshadow paint or I don't even know why I would call this. But I'm just putting a little bit on the back of my hand and it is in a somewhat rose gold shade because I am obsessed with rose gold colors. I'm just going to be picking that up with a small synthetic brush and I'm just going to pop it right onto that inner tear duct just as a kind of pop of light to my inner corner. Mm, just for that added glow without being too over the top. So next, I'm going to be taking the Etude House Play 101 Pencil in number 50, which is just a dark brown chocolate color. I'm going to use that to tightline my eyes today. So just going in and filling in between my lashes as well. If anyone doesn't already know, like to any new viewers out there, I always use the Play 101 pencils because they honestly are the best. So if you haven't heard of Etude House before or you haven't tried out their pencils before, I highly recommend it because they're just so good, so affordable, and really versatile. I'm just going to go ahead and curl my lashes now. Can't believe back in the day, like my early days of YouTube, I would never curl my lashes. I only would sometimes if I put on like falsies, but otherwise I never would. I was so like lazy. I only started doing it like after I moved to Japan because I kind of like was like, eh, whatever, I'll do it. Why not? And then I just kind of realized it really does make a world of difference. Now I do it like every time I do my makeup. Today I'm going to be using a different mascara other than my all-time favorite, which <laughs> if you guys watch my tutorials always, then you would know which one it is. But today I'm going to be using a different Japanese one. It's the Flo Fleur Molte Mascara in uh, long, in long, yeah. And it's all right. It's not as good as my Majolica Majorca one, but it does really good for like lengthening them. So I'm just gonna apply that. And I'm not gonna do falsies today because I just don't feel like it. I feel like if you're ever gonna invest in any kind of Japanese makeup, I definitely recommend the Kate Foundation that I always use in all my videos. Mascaras for sure and liquid eyeliners. Those are like the only three, like few things that Japan does right for makeup is that one foundation. Like I've used a few Japanese foundations before and I just never would buy them because they're horrible or like, I just, I don't know, not worth it. Actually, there was one that was good, but none of the colors matched my skin. So I never like used it in videos because they just didn't match, but it was the, what was it? Makulaj, Makulaj. Maquillage foundation. It was really good, but I think it's like hard to get online. But it was really, really, really good. Like it was a nice matte liquid, liquid to matte, um, high coverage foundation, but it just would not match my skin tone. So I never used it. So while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and highlight my face just using the Becca Skin Perfector that I used before. So I'm just going to highlight those cheekbones. See, this is one highlighter that I really love, and I'm surprised I haven't yet hit pan because I got it when I was in Canada last time. But it's just like, it gives you that dewy look that's still really bright and highlighted without looking chunky. Like, I love highlighters that make my skin look dewy. I remember, I feel like this highlighter, the Becca one, got really popular because of Nikki tutorials. Like it wasn't really known before and then she started using it like that's why i bought it she was obsessed with it for like a while and then i wanted it i wanted to get on that that train and then i was obsessed with it for a while okay for the lips i have no idea what i'm gonna do today i'm really obsessed with the new kylie cosmetics vacation edition liquid lipsticks but i feel like i used those so much recently that you guys are probably sick of it 
Um, actually, no, I think I've only used it in twice. Two, two, well, still, that's like too much. I'm gonna go in with a Jeffree Star one today because I've been using Kylie a lot lately. So either Celebrity Skin or Androgyny. I feel like I don't use Androgyny that often, so let's go and have fun with that one today. It's looking really purple on my skin tone now. Yeah, I feel like it looks really, like it's really pulling a purple tone with my darker skin tone, which I wasn't expecting. Like androgyny usually pulls more of a mauve with my natural skin tone, which is weird. I wasn't expecting that. And I think I'm just gonna have some fun, why not? And I'm gonna put the Kylie Jenner, I said I wasn't gonna use Kylie, but I'm gonna use the Kylie Jenner um, Glitz Gloss. And I'm just gonna put a few dots on the center just to kind of help balance out this lippy, I guess. Just to add a little bit of shine without adding a ton of gloss. Man, I remember back when I was 14 in high school, I was obsessed with lip gloss. Like I just would wear it every day and I have no idea how I would do that because my hair, like I can't stand my hair sticking to my lips and it happens like on a regular basis. Anyway, you guys, that is it for this look. I haven't done like a look like this in a while and I'm digging it. It's really bronzy, really glowy and kind of like messy at the same time. I'm really digging it. So what do you guys think? And I hope you guys enjoyed this talk through chit chatty, get ready with me video. I know it's long. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible for you guys. So it might be like 30 minutes. I'm sorry, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And I promise all my tutorials aren't going to be like this. If you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, definitely comment down below and let me know what your favorite lip color is. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you guys for watching. I love you so much. Remember to thumbs up this video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And of course, I will see you guys next time. Bye.